So we just wanted to come to you and give you an update of uh, one of the boats we're really seriously looking at, so much so that we actually have a contract or a down payment. So what are some of the things you liked about it? Um, it's pretty roomy and there's lots of light down in the main cabin, so that's great. There's really decent space in the berths or the bedrooms and um, it comes with a washing machine, which is pretty awesome. I like that it has four, it actually has five cabins because it has a four peak cabin um, for my son or, or somebody else to hide away up there if they want to. It has another head up there also in case uh, one of the two electric heads. I like that it has electric heads. I like that it has a folding prop. It was already installed. I like that a generator was installed. The generator doesn't function and it really wasn't part of the price, uh, but the fact that it was installed means the Seacocks already exist and a lot of the wiring exists to be able to hook a new generator right into that place uh, and be able to replace it. There's lots of room, the cabins, very voluminous, where the two cabins are in the front of the boat. There's a, a bathroom or a head on one side with a sink and a, a showerable sink head, but there's also a separate shower, which is actually large enough for three, three people to get in there and have a party, but for somebody to take a shower by themselves, um, without elbowing anybody or, or getting in their way. Uh, lots of uh, headroom in the shower, so lots of space. I really love that. And then of course in the back, there's the shower uh, head combination. Both heads have electric toilets. Uh, you could argue the, the plus or minus of that. Um, it seems like it might be more maintenance. Said two heads uh, in the main part of the boat and then an extra manual head up in the bow of the boat. Stainless steel chain. A uh, furling jib and a self-tacking jib, which makes it nice uh, if we're short-handed and the kids or Jen can't help. Um, and the the furling main, because the main furls into the mast. Um, that's a real benefit that I, I really like. Big, wide, spacious decks, uh, clean walkways, fore and aft, lots of storage space. Not as much as you'd expect, because of course the previous owner had I think there's three air conditioner systems in it for the front, the midsection, the main cabin, and the two aft cabins, which takes up a lot of space under the seats. And I'm really evaluating um, possibly moving, maybe the one in the salon, uh, taking that one out and sticking it in the aft storage area so that we could have that storage under the seats. It comes with a water maker, which is pretty awesome. That has never been installed. It's actually when when I heard about the water maker, I'm like, oh, that's great. That would probably require some maintenance. Well, we went and looked at it. The water maker is actually in a crate in a warehouse. When we get the solar arch built, we could actually run this water maker off of uh, 600 watts of solar um, and a battery bank that's big enough. So the nice thing about that is if the generator wasn't working, we could still make water using the batteries. So the doohickey that uh, normally you would open whatever that doohickey is to go from the cockpit down below, gangway, schmangway, I don't know. whatever it is. So is that what you're going to talk about? Yeah. yeah. So it's nice because 
a lot of times you have uh, pieces you have to take out and put them someplace or you have doors that open up and then you have to secure them as they're open because they're hinged a lot of times they're magnetic um, the nice thing about the Hansa so many nice things about it is it actually lifts out of the floor and so it's a really heavy sturdy uh, plexiglass so it's the fact that it's captive in the floor and its tracks, it's the same as a removable one, but you don't have to worry about putting it somewhere. Some other things I forgot to mention about the boat, it's got two electric winches in back. Um, so when I'm feeling lazy or we need to pull somebody up the mast, we don't have to do it by hand. Again, there's some things that need some love on the boat. Um, there was some galvanic reaction in its history, we found out. So the stainless steel uh, bow tank had to be removed, the water tank, and it's got a new one in it that I'm not sure it's installed properly. We're gonna have the surveyor look at that and then make sure the installation was done properly. There was also some damage to the front of the bow from the surveyor's preliminary information. I sent him those pictures and the report of the work that was done. He said that, that uh, it should be as strong as when the boat was manufactured. Another downside concern is the boat's a 2012 and it has inexpensive uh, through hauls that probably aren't the best bronze in the world. So when we do get it hauled out, we're going to take the surveyor's advice and get those looked at, um, see what he has to say about them, and if he if he has a problem with any of them, have them replaced. Unfortunately, some of the charter guests thought the countertops were cutting boards, so the countertops are damaged. So those are the those are the things we like and don't like about it. Um, it's a beautiful boat. I mentioned the size of the mast. I also. I forgot to mention, uh, it is a 49 footer, and that's in the name, the Hansa 495. Uh, 49 feet, it's a long, long boat. It's a big boat. The biggest boat we ever had uh, for a while was a 36 foot Catalina. Probably weighed as much as this piece, but um, 49 foot's long. Luckily, there's a bow thruster, and it's not the kind with the tube. It's the kind that doesn't interfere with, with your cruising because it actually retracts into the bow of the boat so when you need it it extends and then you have full availability of that force and it's a really strong uh, reliable bow thruster so that that was pretty um, that was a, definitely a like for me too just too many likes electric winches bow thruster stainless steel chain folding prop the self tacking jib the furling mast main main sail one of the other things I liked on the Hansa was, and, and again, I'm not an engineer, so I don't know if this is going to make it weaker, uh, but the thing I liked about the Hansas was that it, it had these cleats that you could recess, and so if you didn't need the midship cleats, you'd get rid of them and they're out of the way. I think overall the kids like the boat. I like it. Actually, I don't like it. I love it. It's as big as the apartment we're living in right now. Um, Becca's had some definite opinions. We've looked at some others and there's another one she likes better. Um, I think overall for the family, um, the Hansa will probably be the best fit for us. So the two younger girls, I think they, they really like the Elan um, 45 that we looked at. And the reason why is because Although it only had four bedrooms, one of the bedrooms was a bunk bed. So it, in a sense, it was like um, it was like a five-bedroom boat. So it would have worked the same. Um, my second choice would be the Bavaria. You know, all of the production boats, none of them are made as nice as the Swans and and uh, all the beautiful boats that cost half a million or a million dollars. Uh, we just don't have that bu uh, budget, so we need to go with a production boat. And a lot of those non-production boats, again, don't come for cabin versions. They're not made for the charter industry. And so we really needed a Winnebago, big old Winnebago, to get around the ocean. And so we're willing to compromise a little on build to be able to get the comfort that we need for having four kids on board uh, and older kids. So they need their own space to be able to stretch out and have some privacy and, and possibly to have some guests uh, when guests come.
Just a small hello, so that we can say it doesn't sound like much, but it's enough to make me stay. It's just a small hello, but more than a thousand words, 'cause it's a small hello. The other boats we looked at. So we've looked at this Hansa 495. We've looked at a Beneteau. Uh, we've looked at Elon. We've looked at Bavaria. Yeah, the thing I really like about the Bavaria is it just seemed like a pretty good build. Um, everything seemed sturdy. Uh, the floor, uh, plywood, laminated plywood they used for the floor was really sturdy. That's one thing. Again, okay. So a downside of the Hansa, all of the floor panels you have to get something underneath the panels to be able to lift them up. It was the same with the Elon, that you couldn't just stick your finger in a hole. And I don't know, maybe you can post down below the advantage or disadvantage of having a little hole in a piece of plywood, but if I have an access panel that I need to get to a, a uh, through hole or something real quick to shut it off, I don't need to try and find a tool to be able to get the panel off to get to the through hole. So I think one of the first things we do when we close on this Hansa is I'm going to drill some holes so that I can stick my finger in the panel and lift the panel out pretty quickly. Um, yeah, that was another one. It's like mm -hmm. a half million dollar boat when it was built and they didn't put a nice little stainless steel recessed uh, thumb hole or loop or something to be able to get the floor panel up for the life of me. I, I think it's just they want them to be as pretty as possible and, and with little holes in the floor they just don't look as pretty. I don't know what that is. Like Jen said earlier, Rebecca, our oldest daughter that's with us, um, she really liked the Beneteau and the layout. The first thing she did when she stepped into it and walked down into the, the interior, she says, this is my favorite boat. So it had a lot of nice things going for it. A really good Onan generator that was installed. It did not have in-mast furling. And I'll show when we talk about these other boats. Um, actually, I'll probably just add a picture right here so you can see me standing next to the boom. So I understand there are disadvantages of having in-mass furling, but when, when the boat is rocking back and forth and I'm up standing trying to, to drop the main, it makes it very difficult when you're technically single-handed. And I wanted to be able to do that in case uh, people were sleeping, if one person's on watch and they need to, to reef the sails. Uh, it needs to be an easy process. I didn't want that process to be difficult. So it's tall um, to be able to get up just to the top of the boom, even for somebody that's six feet tall like me. Um, another thing I didn't like about some of the boats was you had to walk around uh, the side stays, the port and starboard stays uh, for the spreader and for the mast. 
and to me that that is another hazard I know there's probably some engineering marvel that has to do with the reason why they put them there but I didn't like that did you like that no so what one was do you think was the easiest to walk around which model the Hansa and the Beneteau oh, oh and we've also looked at a Genoa but you know I hear good things oh is they're so fast they're such well-made boats but I didn't like the the way it was laid out I didn't like the way the floor creaked it just to me it just seemed like it felt smaller yeah it, even though it was a 50 footer it just felt small and same with the Elon the Elon was a 45 but when you walk off of the Bavaria a 45 foot which is very uh, Winnebago ish again like a, a mobile home you get in the Elan, it's like, ooh, yeah, it's a racing boat, but with four cabins. We're not going to be racing anywhere, you know? <laughs> I know when somebody pulls up next to me, sheeted, sheets all tightened up and full sails. I don't know, maybe I might have that tendency to speed up a little bit, but we're not going to be racing. So that, that space was really taken out of the beam of the Elan, so I, I wasn't happy with that. And I think to get the space we needed, we'd have to go to a lot bigger Elan. Another question people are going to ask is, if you have four kids, why didn't you get a catamaran? Well, we're not independently rich. We did save a long time for this wonderful adventure. We sold our house. So this is basically our house. But every catamaran we've looked at that was within our budget was rode hard and put away wet. In other words, to be able to get the same amount of boat uh, for the money, we would have had to buy a catamaran from the early 90s or late 80s. The problem with that is then a lot of our budget would go towards upgrading and replacing items. And that's why we wanted to stay with a monohull. Uh, they're less expensive and we're just gonna have to deal without the real estate. And that's why we wanted a four cabin so the kids could go and hide somewhere when they needed to. So in all honesty, we're gonna be, I realize it's slower than a catamaran. Uh, it rocks back and forth more than a catamaran um, and I've got the deep keel something I'm gonna have to be concerned about it's probably not a Bahamas boat with almost a seven-foot keel but we realize that and that's the compromise we have to make because we could have spent the money uh, that we set aside for upgrades and purchased a catamaran but then we wouldn't have money for upgrades or for repairs and it would have cut our trip short and we didn't want that to limit our, our uh, budget or funding. And we're basically, when we get this monohull and get it upgraded, we're gonna be almost out of money and have just enough to hopefully make it through a year of sailing without having to uh, sell any of the kids for medical research. Right? How much do you think we could get for kids? We'll stop sailing before we get to that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess we'd stop sailing before we had to sell the kids for medical research. That's it. Thanks for listening and hope you enjoy the video. And again, it'll really help us out if you subscribe. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video and we'll have some more videos coming for you um, later on. Appreciate it.